Hello and welcome to Grand Tactician. Uh, so far we have shown you a battle gameplay video of the game, uh, but deep down the game is actually operational level war game covering the whole war from 1861 to 1865. Uh, during the last year we have been working on the campaign layer of the game, and today we will be taking a look at some of the campaign gameplay. Um, using here a, a pre-alpha development build of the game, so everything seen or heard is still very much work in progress. The first thing you notice, of course, is the campaign map. And if we zoom out a bit, uh, you can see that it covers uh, from Texas and Florida in south, all the way to Minnesota and Maine up in the north. Uh, the map is divided uh, in the states, controlled either by the Confederacy, which I'm currently playing, or the Union. Uh, zooming in a bit, we can see uh, the sort of uh, war map uh, with the most important cities and towns and infrastructure shown here. Uh, for example, roads, rail lines, ports, and so on. And also uh, the military units uh, presented by these uh, flags and also the ship symbols uh, in the sea or uh, river regions. Taking a closer look in Northern Virginia, we have the appropriately named Army of Northern Virginia stationed here under uh, General Joseph E. Johnston. It's an army made up of uh, multiple corps level organizations. So in the valley, we have Jackson's Corps, in the south, Hill's Corps, and here in the Virginia Peninsula, we have Magruder and Army of the Peninsula, who is holding in bay. Uh, Fort Monroe Garrison and the Department of, of Virginia. Uh, taking a closer look at the big picture, uh, we can see the uh, military balance between North and South here in this screen. And it looks like uh, it's uh, still quite evenly matched conflict, even though uh, the size of uh, Union armies and uh, Navy is a lot larger than what we have in the south. Also, it's, uh, it looks like the northern war effort has been more successful lately with more battles won and more casualties inflicted on the Confederacy. And uh, commanding the northern armies, we have uh, George B. McClellan, who is also commander of Army of the Potomac and commander of Army of Northern Virginia. Uh, Joseph E. Johnston is currently the highest ranking officer in the southern armies. Other important information we can see uh, in the top bar here, for example, the uh, finances. Here we can see how the government is funded, how money is collected and how money is spent. Also available are uh, the policies which we will take a look later on. And then we have the production of the nation, for example, all the industries, their production and capacity, as well as uh, information about trade, prices in the nation, and so on. Import and export shown as well. And for further information, here we can take a look, for example, at the dynamic front lines. Even though the map is uh, divided to states, this is not the military reality on the ground. Uh, but the movement of armies, uh, controlling of uh, cities, ports, uh, changes in the front lines which move. As can be seen here, for example, uh, the bulge of uh, Union presence here in Tennessee and also in the coastal areas in North Carolina, Virginia, and Florida. Other information we can see here is the uh, intelligence gathering of our armies uh, shown here as a heat map so the r uh, red areas are sh uh, the ones where our armies can collect uh, good information about enemy presence and here we can uh, see more accurate information about the enemy movements outside of these uh, red areas the information is more vague and 
uh, maybe movements of larger armies can be followed but uh, not those of the smaller smaller units here we can also uh, take a look at the uh, workforce distribution of slavery trade uh, support within the nations and here for example we can see that the indian territory here is quite low in support of the union cause and also uh, we can see with the front lines that it's uh, controlled more by uh, confederate armies than the union so uh, these low support areas are of course important important targets for our military operations uh, back in virginia let's take a closer look at our military and in this view we can uh, see all our armies and garrisons also fleets and officers and here for example we have uh, the order of battle for army of northern virginia in this view we can also uh, manage the army and change its order of battle for example here we have jackson score uh, with one division of two brigades and uh, separate brigades under jackson directly so for example we could recruit or uh, arrange a new uh, division command level under jackson like this and it's called fields division and then we can uh, move units under this newly created brigade uh, division by simply dragging and dropping and we also have a brigade of cavalry and some uh, horse artillery so we could create another uh, division command there and then add the cavalry under that one and with the newly formed uh, least division uh, we could add some more units to it by recruiting for example in Virginia we still have some volunteers and we could recruit a new cavalry unit for example customize the looks a bit to our liking for example like this and then when recruiting it's added to the order of battle so here we have a new uh, cavalry brigade now under lee it's also uh, similar with the fleets so here we have the list of uh, ships for example in james river squadron under franklin buchanan and here we have a list of ships uh, waiting in harbor so for example if we want to add uh, css hampton to this uh, fleet we simply drag and drop and now it's added uh, to this uh, uh, this uh, squadron we can also manage uh, the core of officers here and uh, see who we got working for us and in all in all of these screens we can uh, filter and sort the commanders for example we could filter out uh, veterans of uh, mexican war and we could for example uh, sort them by physical age and so on uh, each commander has his uh, personal ratings so here for example evander law uh, you can see he's a colonel currently and he's a graduate of west point and has been working in infantry earlier here we have his uh, personal stats and also uh, some history for example uh, the promotions and so on Here we have the information about the army itself with the commander and number of men and guns as well as the supply situation which currently looks quite okay and the situation of the army uh, what they're doing currently entrenching uh, their readiness is currently quite low while intelligence gathering is high and so on the orders we can give to these armies include the stance offensive or defensive and that decides how they will 
uh, act when uh, encountering enemy units, for example. Then we can give uh, orders to the cavalry units within this army. We can have them uh, guarding the uh, supply trains and also a guard against enemy raiding. Then we could have the cavalry uh, conduct raiding within the proxi uh, proximity of the army, or we could have them scout ahead of the main body, which will increase uh, readiness as well as intelligence gathering. We can also construct some buildings like telegraph stations, depots where uh, supplies can be stocked, as well as forts. Uh, here we can also order the, the army to conduct a forced march, which will be uh, quite uh, tiresome for the men, and their condition may drop, as well as morale, and we might see increase in uh, desertion. But of course, this will make the army march quicker on the map. Uh, moving the units is similar as in uh, battle. So, for example, if we would like to move hill score uh, to the Shenandoah Valley, we simply give an order. And here we can see the options, so we can order them to move at a certain date. We can order them to use forced march, and we can also allow them to use different means of transportation. For example, rail movement, which will make the movement quicker, but it will also uh, reserve the rail uh, capacity we have. And when we give the order, you can see here uh, the order delay, which is more than one day. 24 hours and some minutes and during this time of course uh, the orders from army of northern virginia are being delivered and then he'll really prepare his uh, corps to move out the campaign also runs in real time as can be seen here and we can accelerate or pause the game as needed and here now it's already morning of March 5th, and the uh, Hill score is still preparing itself to move out. And that's what I was uh, talking about, the transportation capacity, uh, we can control it here in the top panel. So currently we have uh, 80 locomotives uh, reserved for military use, and we can control the number uh, by increasing or decreasing the amount of locomotives, and this will cost... Uh, upkeep. On the campaign map we also have a fully functional uh, economy and you can take a look at how it works for example by moving a mouse over any of these uh, infrastructure points that appear for example bridges, towns and so on and clicking on one uh, we can see which uh, goods are being uh, traded in this area and where they are being moved for example uh, you can see the crops trade in this area how it is uh, moved from one node to another and of course uh, these nodes then they can be raided and they can be captured by armies which of course makes a uh, flow of supplies to the armies uh, vital so it's not only about moving the armies and engaging enemy armies in field battles but it's also about cutting the lines of supplies and making uh, the enemy supply situation dire, so they would need to, for example, uh, cancel their operation and return uh, the resupply. Uh, what else we can see here on the map, for example, are the industries. Here we have some Confederate plantations and uh, what they're producing, the available workforce, slavery, the taxes they're paying, and so on. Uh, here we can see Hill's Corps now moving uh, via train to Shenandoah Valley, as ordered. And when there's no longer a rail connection, they will start marching, which is, like you can see, a bit slower. And returning to Virginia, we can see Hill's Corps has reached their ordered destination. Uh, and here on the northern side of River Potomac, we see a concentration of Union units, uh, mostly belonging to the Army of the Potomac. And because of the 
intelligence we have on them, uh, which is not accurate, we can on only uh, estimate the strength of these units and their position. For example, the fifth core here, the estimation is that they have some 19,000 men with some maybe 100 guns and so on. And with, and with the night falling, we can see some uh, union movement here in form of the first core. And here, here we can also check the uh, system we are using for uh, initiating field battles. So uh, each army and each core has a combat radius shown here uh, in the red circle, and as well as a command radius, the outer red circle. Uh, if one of these armies is uh, offensive and the other army is within its uh, combat ra uh, radius, uh, then a uh, field battle will start and all the units that are in range uh, to reinforce this battle will start moving towards the area and these will be the reinforcements during the battle. So, for example, here we have now first core moving in. And there you go, we have an engagement, and we also have Jackson's score here starting to reinforce with a delay timer of some 11 hours, and maybe Hill score as well will start moving in later when the word reaches them. And then we have the choice to play the battle uh, in the battle gameplay. Or then we can auto resolve it so it's automatically calculated. And we could uh, deploy the defend. In this case, if the enemy is uh, attacking, it doesn't really matter. We could withdraw or start, uh, try to withdraw in an orderly fashion, uh, skirmishing with the enemy army, or then we could also try to retreat. And after the battle is joined on the campaign map, the game takes us to the battle map. Uh, and here we have the battle gameplay as described before. And we can also check, for example, in case of Confederacy, that we have Jackson score arriving in about 26 hours. And we also have Hill score arriving in approximately 30 hours. And if this uh, battle takes, uh, takes uh, more than one day, then these reinforcements will of course start to make a difference in the battle. Okay, now that's it for today. Thank you for watching and gotta run. Have a battle to lead.